Last week, I was in Grenada representing Canary at the Structured Dialogue for the Caribbean on the Green Climate Fund. This is the largest of three global climate funds with over 4 billion US at present. And I wanted to give an overview of the sessions, including the high-level meeting of the ministers, and share key takeaways of relevance to civil society from this dialogue. So firstly, the fact is that it cannot be business as usual. Given severe damage from climate-related disasters, and of course, given the findings from the recent IPCC special report on meeting the 1.5 degrees Celsius target. We really need decisive action to adapt and mitigate greenhouse gas emissions and to mobilize climate financing to support this. In the high-level session, Grenada's Prime Minister, Keith Mitchell, and ministers and various representatives from across the region highlighted the devastation from Hurricanes Irma and Maria and the recent flood in Trinidad and Tobago over the last year and the need for grants and concessionary loans that look beyond our GDP per capita as a yardstick for determining our needs and access as Caribbean small island states. And they welcome public-private partnerships and the private sector investment to spur climate resilient development. The ministers and other representatives also gave their full support to Prime Minister Holness of Jamaica who will be leading the charge along with President Macron of France to mobilize financing to replenish the Green Climate Fund in 2019 to ensure we can rise to the climate challenge. Now, so far the region has received about 6% of the total financing that has been distributed from the Green Climate Fund. This amounts to roughly 450 million US with six approved projects targeting 12 of the Caribbean countries. But they certainly need to further increase our access to this financing and there were a number of key lessons learned so far about the process and what is needed to improve it that were identified at this dialogue. In particular, it's key for the process to be country driven with input and buy-in from all stakeholders into investment priorities and the pipeline of projects developed for the Green Climate Fund. These projects must also be anchored squarely in a country's development agenda. This requires strengthening of the ministries responsible for climate change, sustainable development, and finance to provide leadership and enable a participatory multi-stakeholder approach for climate change action. Ways to enhance private sector engagement, both in implementation and leveraging financing for projects also needs to be a focus. This should target not only large companies, but micro, small, and medium enterprises across the region. Another focus obviously needs to be increasing civil society engagement and access to the Green Climate Fund. As part of a panel of strengthening the pipeline of projects in the region, I noted that we as civil society organizations can add real value to projects in three ways. As firstly, trusted local partners, we have in-depth understanding of the local context, how to build the capacity of local communities, enterprises, and resource users on the ground and effectively engage these target groups. And most importantly, we have a good understanding how to ensure projects are delivered to have concrete impact in terms of building resilience. For example, Canary is currently partnering with the UN Food and Agriculture Organization to develop a resource mobilization strategy and project concepts for building climate resilience in the Caribbean forestry sector and related livelihoods based on 30 years of experience doing participatory forest management with communities, forest enterprises, and national forest authorities across the region. Secondly, we are innovators and have the ability to think outside the box and pilot new approaches and tools for adaptation and mitigation that are worth scaling up as part of GCF projects. Thirdly, we can play a role as mobilizers of resources that enable effective action. For example, the well-known 1.5 to Stay Life campaign that was led by the NGO Panos Caribbean. In addition, catalyzing knowledge exchange and strategic partnerships is key to ensure effective design and delivery of projects. An initial step towards this was enabled through an interactive marketplace of ideas on the last day of the dialogue. 
Eight of the countries presented 15 ideas for future Green Climate Fund projects, including on adaptation, mitigation, and cross-cutting solutions, totaling about 750 million US. And they were able to receive valuable feedback from participants and have the opportunity to identify potential partners to take forward their ideas. Now, if you really want to move forward with these ideas and other projects, we need to think about how to effectively engage civil society as well as the private sector as the ones who are really the implementers on the ground. And we need to enhance their readiness to support national government and regional organizations like the Caribbean Community Climate Change Center, 5Cs, and the Caribbean Development Bank to design and deliver quality projects under the Green Climate Fund and really build climate resilience in the Caribbean. And Canary hopes to drive this process forward over the next year. So check out our website and social media for further updates.